Good morning, United Presbyterian Church. Um, Stephen here, worshiping with you today from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, you might hear some screaming in the background. My son is not impressed that he cannot play my guitar right now. Um, but if you're anything like me, over the last few weeks you have been on the go and life has been really busy. And when life gets busy, things can get overwhelming and exhausting. And so I just wanna invite you this morning to just take some time to breathe, to pause, to meditate, to just allow yourself to rest in the Lord, to feel the presence of the Spirit around you and to know that God is here. So let's take some time in the Psalm this morning. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it's my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. So Lord God, we wait for you this morning. Lord, we'd ask that you will just allow us to rest in your presence today, Lord, that we may know that in all things and at all times and all places, you are a God who is good, a God who loves us, a God who is there for us. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, and I worship you, and I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turn. Waymaker, 
peacekeeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, never stop working Never stop, never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working you Never stop, never stop working Never stop, never stop working and Even when I don't feel it, you're working even when I don't see it, you're working you Never stop, never stop working you Never stop, never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working you Never stop, never stop working you Never stop, never stop working Where you make miracle worker, promise keeper Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Today, uh, we're going to continue our study on the book of Ephesians. We've gone through the first chapter and the second chapter already, uh, and the title of the sermon series has been Build This House. How can we be a people uh, that build up one another, that build up the church? And so our reading today is from the third chapter in the book of Ephesians. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ, the boundless riches of Christ, and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how deep and how high is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. There's a story 
Jesus tells in the gospel about a man who builds his house on sand. When the rains came and the waters rose and the wind swirled all around, the house collapsed. But there was this other person who built their house on rocks. And when the storms came upon the house, it stood firm and withstood all that was thrown at it. In our chapter from Ephesians today, Paul returns back to this concept of mystery. It's a concept we've talked about a little over the last two weeks. Life is full of mystery with all its ups and downs and twists and turns. We have moments when we are on mountaintops praising God for all we've experienced and moments when we are lost, wandering through valleys, wondering where God went. It's all a mystery. And Paul is writing this letter from prison. His life had taken quite a turn since his encounter with Jesus. And I have to imagine that being locked in prison because of his decision to follow Jesus had to leave some doubts lingering in his mind, although he doesn't, he doesn't like to, to show them. Um, but this isn't the way his life was supposed to go. Right. I mean, he, he was well respected. He was well educated. He was a leader in his community before he met Jesus. He was the one putting people in prison, um, not the one going to prison. But here he was in jail, writing to these young churches in Ephesus, letting them in on this mystery of Christ. He writes that I am the prisoner of Jesus Christ for the sake of you. This means that he is in jail because he went to share with them the good news. It is for their sake he is in chains. Now, he could easily be bitter at God in this moment. No doubt he'd have a reason to be frustrated. I know I wouldn't blame him. I probably would myself. But he goes on to say that he became a servant of the gospel, that he is a prisoner by the gift of God's grace. And that grace was to preach to others the boundless riches of Christ. Paul is in jail, and yet somehow to him, this is all an act of grace. And generally when I experience something tragic or unfair, grace isn't necessarily the word that comes to mind. But for Paul, his service to Christ flows from the grace of God in his life. But grace isn't something that he just receives. His grace is an act. His grace comes in the sharing of the boundless riches of Christ. That grace is to share it with others who Jesus Christ is and all that comes with who Jesus Christ is. And for him, this makes it all worth it. Sharing with others the boundless riches of Christ. There is no limit for Paul to the riches in Christ. It is never ending and forever expanding. It is boundless. There's no place or situation or doubt or fear that the love of Jesus cannot enter into. And Paul tells us that that love, that boundless and rich love dwells within us. It dwells within us. In the middle of the mystery, there is a love stirring within and through and around us. So when we are busy and on the go and life is taking just so many turns and we are frustrated or anxious or depressed or feeling just completely overwhelmed with fear, there is a spirit a love that is within us and around us. And when the winds pick up, if we are rooted in that love, if we are rooted in that love, if our foundation and strength is in Christ Jesus, we can be like the house built on the rocks. So when the storms of life come and, and the winds pick up and the waves rise, we will be rooted in a solid foundation. And as the church, as a community who proclaims the good news of Jesus Christ, we need to be rooted in that love. We need to allow that love to fill us and take shape within us because there is, according to Paul, power in that love, the power to do immeasurably more than we can ever imagine. We serve a God who can do impossible things, who can make a way where there is none, who works wonders and miracles beyond our comprehension. And that same power is at work within us and within the church. But only if we allow the love of Jesus to take root within us. We need to be established 
in that love. We need to be a church built upon the rocks. This week, I pray that you spend time uh, just alone with God. If it's in your car driving to work, you know, in the midst of the business, take some time to just be present. Have you been allowing the love of Christ to take root in your life? Or have you found yourself feeling like that house built on sand? And as things just keep piling up, you just kind of feel like you're breaking down and washing away. Life can hit us with a lot. And sometimes it can be overwhelming and it can feel like too much. But there is a love that wants to take hold of us, that wants to take root and stand firm within us. So in the midst of the mystery, we can know there is grace waiting for us and a love and a hope that knows no ends, and no bounds. Lord Jesus, let's pray that your love will take root in us this week, Lord, that we, we may be able to stand firm in you in the midst of the mysteries of life. May we know that you are good May we know that you are love. Fill us with your spirit today so we may go forth proclaiming the good news of you, the good news of Jesus Christ, the one who came and died and rose again to give us life and life to the fullest. I ask all of this in your name. Amen. So now to the one who is able to keep us from falling, to the only God, our Savior through our Lord Jesus Christ. Be all glory and all majesty, both now and forevermore. Go in peace this day. And we're going to conclude uh, with just one final song this morning. today. Uh, go and greet those around you uh, with the love of Jesus Christ and know that Jesus Christ is with you. Amen. <laughs>